Look, I know what you're thinking. Another car reviewer who's going to give us another car review for a car that we cannot afford. Well, it is in your best interest to listen because this is one car you can afford. Big thanks to Suzuki Branson for making this video possible. It's actually astonishing how stylish this car looks considering the fact that the last Vitara we got looked like this. We are looking at the top of the line auto hybrid model, which features keyless entry and lots of other cool features that we're going to cover in this review. As you know by now, 2023 is the year of the light bar. All car manufacturers are doing it. So if your car doesn't have a light bar, it means you're not working hard enough. The boot measures 376 liters, but if you get the hybrid all grip model, then you're gonna get slightly less room and you'll be stuck at 310 liters. In the boot, you get a full size spare wheel, not that biscuit that you get with other manufacturers. It's time to do a load cover test, so we're gonna unclip this side, unclip that side, remove the load cover, and then let's see if it fits inside the load floor. Uh, yes it does it's a bit of a tight fit but you can just crush it down with your groceries the grand vitara features a 12 volt socket in the back a handy light switch in the boot light and a nice little handy spot to hang your groceries this i don't like this i don't know what it is i don't know how it works maybe i'm just doff but i just don't like this and here's why this car comes with no automated tailgate, which is a bit of a letdown considering the fact that its Chinese counterparts do. When the seats are folded, you get a gut ton of room, but no flat loading bay. Backseat passengers are pampered with comfortable leather seating in the back. Controls for your air climate control, so you can just fan yourself and the passenger next to you. USB as well as USB-C. And a nice little cubby hole for your cell phone, whatever property you want to throw in there. I am currently sitting behind my driving position in the Suzuki Grand Vitara and it is quite comfortable. There's enough knee room. My legs are touching the back seat of the front seat, but it's not too bad. The seats are comfortable. The headrests, once adjusted to your preferred position, are comfortable as well. And it's a nice place to be back here. You get isofix points in the back of the car, but not in the front, as well as these strange zips on the car's upholstery. I'm not sure what they're for. If you know, comment below. Look, Suzuki wanted getting into this car to be an experience. From the moment you take a seat in those comfortable, supportive seats to the moment you look in your rear view mirror and realize that, oh, it auto dims. The 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system is a pleasure to live with and boasts both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Whether they are wireless or not does not matter because at this price point, you don't really care. You also get a 360 view camera, which always boots up when you start the car. Here's your digital cluster, but we'll only be getting to the hybrid and battery business later on in the video. Now, one thing you can't help but like about this car are the air vents. They feel good, they feel solid, and you close them by just pushing them towards the hazard button. The Grand Vitara GLX features a 9-inch infotainment system and if you're going for GL models, you only get a 7-inch system, which looks uncomfortable because those bezels are bezeling. I love the fact that the climate controls are physical buttons and they're all accessible and right at your fingertips. You have your traction control, auto hold and parking buttons right in the center, so they're easy to use and always visible. Here's your gauge cluster as you press the auto hold button. The head up display is where Suzuki kills it. You have so much customization with this car's head up display. You can see the gear you're in, your speed, your time, and the amount of battery left in the hybrid battery. This car has a head up display which competes with cars that are not even in this price range. I know you're thinking, how much does this feature cost? Well, it comes standard across the entire range from 339,000 Rand up to 529,000 Rand for the top of the line GLX model. You get an auto dimming mirror as standard, as well as the stylish sunglasses holder and lights for both the driver and the passenger. 
GLX models come with a sunroof which lets you take in some sun in the winter and a nifty sunshade which lets you block out the sun in the summer. Cutie check! Time to see how stunning I look in these vanity mirrors which come with a nifty night light. Just note that the sun visors do not extend as you see in premium cars. The gauge cluster is simple and straightforward. If you've driven any car, then you know exactly what to expect. The six-speed four-wheel drive hybrid model comes with pedal shifters on the steering wheel, which let the driver switch gears and have fun while driving auto. For all the good, there's a bit of bad. The touchscreen volume buttons. This is one thing I wanted to avoid, but we can't avoid it for long. The fact that you have to tap, 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 tap over and over to increase or decrease the volume is one thing I cannot get behind. The fact that you can't even just hold the button, you can't just hold the touch and then it takes the volume up or down is just unacceptable, Suzuki. Let's do better with this. There is some awesome customization that comes with the car. I love the fact that you can actually set your own wallpaper on the clock that displays on the touchscreen when it's in standby. That adds some customization and some flair to the car. Now here's a fun nifty feature that you don't see often in cars, speed dependent volume control. The volume in the car goes up when you're speeding and it comes down when you're slowing down. This is one feature I wish I had in my car because I'm always turning up the volume when I'm on the highway. The car also comes with Wi-Fi. The leatherette interior in the GLX models is stunning and it also features ambient lighting which I can't showcase because I was in a bright environment as well as wireless charging. The car comes with some handy driving modes which include snow, sport and auto which allow the car to intelligently decide what mode to put itself in depending on where you're driving. You get an adjustable armrest covered in the leatherette material, tons of storage in there, as well as two cup holders right in front of that. Let us not discuss the handbrake. I know, I know it's Grimming 2004. The Suzuki Grand Vitara is offered in two engine options. The first engine is a naturally aspirated four-cylinder petrol engine that delivers 77 kilowatts of power and 138 newton meters of torque. The second engine on offer and a first for Suzuki South Africa is the petrol engine with mild hybrid electric power. This engine uses a much higher compression ratio than its sibling and an always-on mild hybrid system with a power output of 75 kilowatts and 136.8 newton meters. Opening the car's door, you have decent sized storage as well as a bottle holder for your bottle. This car offers some of the fastest opening and closing windows I have ever seen in my life. But one thing that does suck though is the fact that Suzuki is still only offering auto window for the driver only. Meaning passengers must hold the window and hold the window. Let's change the Suzuki. When all is said and done, you won't find a car that offers all the features, space and functionality this car offers below half a million rand. So from me, it's a buy. I am currently sitting behind my driving position in the Suzuki Grand Vitara Brezza. Uh